Articles of Confederation have failed. The year is 1787. Civil unrest has ushered in discussions of a unified central government, bringing with it legal document titled the Constitution. The Constitution outlines the power given to three branches of a government, of and for the people. Many delegates sent to the Constitutional Convention refused to ratify the Constitution without an addition of the proposed Bill of Rights, a document which claims to protect the rights of the American people through several amendments to the Constitution. Upon the addition of the Bill of Rights, the Constitution receives all needed ratifications. Of all the amendments to the Constitution, perhaps the most important in protecting human rights is the First Amendment. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, or of the right of the people peaceably to assemble. But despite all measures taken by the Constitutional Congress to protect the freedom of the peoples, many of these areas are being challenged today. Freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom to assemble. Are we really free? Today, many of our governmental leaders are searching for an answer for this question. How do we ensure that this privately operated layer uh, is not doing things that infringe upon our rights, either at the behest of governments or on their own, um, which diminish our ability to voice dissent um, and to organize politically and so on. Now, some people propose that to protect religious freedom, we must ban speech that is critical or offensive about religion. We do not agree. But somewhere I read of the freedom of assembly. Somewhere I read of the freedom of speech. Somewhere I read of the freedom of press. Somewhere I read that the greatness of America is the right to protest far right. To understand freedom and to learn more about the First Amendment, we must first explore the meaning of freedom. Is there a universal meaning of freedom? It seems that each person's ideals of freedom vary on their experiences and lifestyles. So how can the government claim to grant freedom if we don't understand its very meaning? Freedom, in its most simple meaning, is to know the truth and to have the ability, the freedom, to choose the best choice based on that truth. And perhaps what is the most significant aspect of freedom is that you cannot have freedom without boundaries. True freedom presupposes and demands that there is a law. True freedom entails responsibility. Because of this definition, we are more able to understand the freedom given to us by the First Amendment. Viktor Frankl said, Freedom, however, is not the last word. Freedom is only part of the story and half of the truth. Freedom is but the negative aspect of the whole phenomenon whose positive aspect is responsibleness. In fact, freedom is in danger of degenerating into mere arbitrariness unless it is lived in terms of responsibleness. That is why I recommend that the Statue of Liberty on the East Coast be supplemented by a Statue of Responsibility on the West Coast. Victor Frankl, an author and psychologist, is credited with the original idea of the Statue of Responsibility. The Statue of Responsibility Foundation, or SOR, has laid out an equation based upon the cornerstones our forefathers laid down when they signed the Constitution. The equation reads L plus R times X equals F, or liberty plus responsibility times U equals freedom. Our forefathers understood that true freedom entails responsibility, and this equation is crucial to understanding our freedom and its boundaries. How far can we take our freedom? How far can the government restrict it? Perhaps we will never find the perfect measures of either, but for as long as America stands, we will never stop seeking an answer to these questions. When I had the great privilege and honor to come and become an American, to be given my life, my freedom, the great opportunity to be a wife and a mother and an American citizen. These acts shatter steel but they cannot dent the steel of American resolve. 
America was targeted for attack because we're the brightest beacon for freedom and opportunity in the world. And no one will keep that light from shining.